I'd like to call the meeting of the Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees for today, the 10th of November, to order. I'd ask uh, Trustee uh, Irma Archuleta to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Please place your right hand before your heart. Madam Secretary, could we call the roll? Irma Archuleta. Present. Jenny Baxter. Here. Jeff Kellogg. Here. Doug Otto. Here. And Sunny Zia. Here. There is uh, nothing to report out of the closed session that we had right before we, had, where we, we began this open session. I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the October 27th regular meeting of the Long Beach City College Board of Trustees. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Zia, seconded by Trustee Baxter. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, no. Roll call. Irma Archuleta? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. Sunny Zia? Do we have any uh, introductions or special announcements? Okay. Is there any reordering of the agenda? Not I do. Um, I'd like to propose that we um, hear item number 4.2 first, the local workforce training, apprenticeship, and local hire policy prior to the presentations. Oh, why is that? Why is that? Item 4.2, the... No, I know what it is, but I, I mean... This I'm is requesting the first time I've heard that this. we, uh, he, uh, we uh, move it up before the presentations. Why? Because there's a lot of people that I'm assuming are here for that item, and it would be great to be mindful of their time. That's all. It's just a suggestion, recommendation. What's the sense of the board? Is it what several is presentations? It? It's the... Um, it's the local workforce training, apprenticeship, and local hire policy. It's okay with me. How about, how about yours? I don't think we need a motion. We just need a consensus. Well, I move that we move on, uh, that we um, move the agenda item. If if there's a consensus, I don't think we need to to make a formal motion about it. Okay. Pardon, Jeff. It seems that we have consensus, President Otto. All right, we will move four two up to the um, to um, um, right after two point nine. Um, yeah. Can we have the uh, ASB president's report? Good evening, Superintendent, President Oakley, Board President Otto, members of the board and members of the public. Uh, first and foremost, we will be having our ASB cabinet meeting this week at the Pacific Coast Campus at 8 a.m. on Friday, room LL102. Secondly, I would like to thank the members of the board that attended um, the events that we had this past two weeks. We had the Beverly O'Neill Leadership Conference. We also had the Veterans Day Parade that uh, Board of Trustee members uh, Kellogg, uh, Dr. Baxter and um, uh, uh, Ms. Archuleta, uh, Trustee Archuleta attended. So thank you for that. Um, and that is all from my report. Trustee President Otto, could I yes. talk to uh, Dal? Dal, could you please come forward? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that means come over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dal, uh, Trustee Zia and I are working on helping the homeless students. And one thing that was uh, brought up is some kind of a resource center for them. And so on behalf of the board, we are giving you each a can of food. And there'll be more information later uh, to start. 
Thank you. If I may, um, Trustee Baxter, thank you so much for your leadership in this effort. Uh, I also want to add that in my um, uh, place of work, we're organizing um, the employees to support giving hygiene products and um, blankets and socks for our homeless students, and we'll be coordinating that. So we'll, you, you'll hear from um, us shortly, um, and we'll, we'll get it to you before Thanksgiving, hopefully. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item 2.9, public comments on agenda items. A total of three minutes will be uh, allotted for each speaker with a maximum of 20 minutes to each subject unless extended by the board president. We have four uh, requests to speak. The first is Tom, from Tommy Fava, who with the IBW Local 11, and this is on agenda item 4.2. Welcome. Thank you, board president. Uh, good evening tonight, uh, Superintendent and uh, Board of Trustees and, and staff and public that's here today. Um, I'm wholeheartedly here to support 4.2 uh, policy. Um, I think that's a, it's a great policy that can move Long Beach City College forward when it comes to implementing these type of projects, um, adding uh, local hire to it, adding uh, local workforce training and apprenticeship programs. I think that's great. It's been a long time uh, coming, so um, I think this is this is a great policy to move forward. And I urge the board of trustees to to vote on this. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our second speaker is Chris Hannon, also speaking on 4.2. Welcome, Chris. Welcome. Uh, Good evening, Honorable Board President, uh, trustees, Vice Presidents, Superintendent, uh, staff. My name is Chris Hannon, uh, Council Representative for the Los Angeles and Orange Counties Building and Construction Trades Council. Uh, Long Beach City College was selected as our academic partner in the area to help prepare the workforce to be successful in the apprenticeship programs. We're currently working with the College on our uh, MC3 pre-apprenticeship program and what it is is it's a program that was developed by the National Building Trades Department all the international unions of the building trades the skilled crafts the men and women who constructed Long Beach who constructed uh, Southern California as well as this nation we've worked together on what we're looking for to get somebody ready to be successful in the apprenticeship programs. We've selected Long Beach uh, City College to be that partner. We're currently working with the college to get that program up and running. Uh, and we also encourage when they're going through the program to continue their education. Uh, we're, we're welcoming, we're looking for better, more diverse qualified candidates to be our future and Long Beach City College is who we selected in the area, and we 100% support the board directing the superintendent to look into a workforce training, local hire policy, and focusing primarily on apprenticeship and local hire. It's a win-win. We spend over a billion dollars a year nationally on training with all the crafts together. There's local programs here. It's a good way to start your career. It's the way I started my career 20 years ago. I got my start. It was only a small project, three days at Santa Ana College. 20 years later, I'm still earning a great living. Never had any idea something like this would be possible. You know, we've got uh, young people that are gonna be our future. They're gonna be our future foremans. They're gonna be our future superintendents, our future business owners our future leaders in the labor movement. Uh, it's a win-win for business, uh, your students. Uh, many of the programs already have uh, college credits for electives. It'll encourage the students when they earn their electives through their apprenticeship and they begin earning a good living to continue their education here and take their general studies here at the college and uh, continue to be productive members of the Long Beach community. And uh, we're, again, 100% behind 
the, the trustees and directing the superintendent. If you need any help at all, we're more than willing to lend our resources. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is uh, Rachel Hollenberg, uh, speaking on agenda item uh, 8.1, which is the 2015-2016 first quarter budget performance report. Thank you. Good evening to everyone. My name is Rachel Hollenberg and I've taught philosophy at LBCC since 1998. One of the classes that I teach is Intro to Ethics, and one of the lessons that arises in an ethics class is that money in and of itself does not provide a moral justification for behavior. Consider, I suggest to my students, whether paying someone $10 million to kill another human being would in and of itself justify that behavior. Clearly, the enormous sum alone does not justify that action. Similarly, to suggest that something is too expensive is also not in and of itself a moral judgment. For instance, consider going to visit a beloved relative who lives on another continent this weekend. While most might suggest that it is too expensive to make such a trip, they might change their minds about the trip being too expensive if the relative was gravely ill and wanted to see us before she or he died. Once the gravity of the situation is apparent, what was once too expensive may become necessary. Thus, the issue is not really the money, but the value that the money expresses. So what values do the board and the administrators express to the constituent groups on campus? Here is what I've seen and heard in my position as chief negotiator for the full-time faculty union. Last month at the board meeting, I watched the math department give a wonderful presentation about the innovative ways that faculty are integrating Alex into a successful learning environment. Congratulations are due to the math faculty. On the other hand, as chief negotiator, I have heard many of our math faculty teach overloads at schools other than LBCC because the district does not value the faculty who work overtime. Nearly all comparable districts in our contract pay more than LBCC for hourly assignments. The faculty are more valuable than that. Last month at the board meeting, I watched the counseling department discuss the millions of dollars of new revenue being generated by the counselors via student educational plans and new software. Yet no one mentioned that the counselors are forced to work in 30-minute sessions with students who may need more time than that to understand the educational plan, or more counseling to have an educational plan that will truly address the students as human beings, rather than treating the students as 30-minute units to generate dollars. The faculty and students are more valuable than that. Last month at the board meeting, I watched as over $1 million was allocated for three consulting companies. One company will survey voters about LBCC getting more money for bonds. The other two companies are to streamline the processes of the college. And yet only around $300,000 is being offered to the full-time faculty. And the faculty are more valuable than that. It seems superficially that LBCC values all employee groups equally when every group almost gets a similar percentage raise. However, we all understand that the same percentage of a larger salary, like the administrators, is a larger dollar amount. The full and part-time faculty... Please, please turn it back on. You're about done. Thank you, President Otto. Mm -hmm. We have heard the values expressed by the administration and board through the allocating of funds at the college. We believe that we are more valuable than that, and we would like the board of trustees and the administrators to believe that we are more valuable than that. Thank you. And our last speaker is uh, Janae Hund, who's going to talk about agenda item 4.1, the recommendations from the Board of Trustees Ad Hoc Committee for communicating with the Long Beach Community College District constituencies. Good evening. Yes, I am Janae Hund. I am our CCA president, our full-time faculty union president. Good evening, board, uh, administration, faculty, staff, students, and community members. As I speak this evening, I am reiterating the refrain of my colleague, Kirsten Moreno, who spoke at the last Board of Trustees meeting on the topic of campus safety, and she emphasized that we can do better. My comments this evening are in response to agenda item 4.1, the Trustee Ad Hoc Committee on Communication. First, I want to applaud the district's new policy and procedure on free speech, which opens the campus to free speech, 
rather than a small platform on campus dedicated to free speech. My expired colleague, Julian Delgadio, a card-carrying ACLU member, would be thrilled to hear of this new policy. A great example of we can do better. Similarly, I want to applaud the district on the board docs as this system is quite easy to follow and review agendas. This is another example of we can do better. On the other hand, while the college did embark on a communication study, I have reviewed this study and found some poignant areas in which I would argue the district could have done better. Specifically, only 25 students participated in the study for a college boasting attendance of 30,000 students who are our top constituent group, 25 students who are not drawn from a scientifically random sample seems insufficient. Similarly, only one faculty was interviewed for this communication study. That is an insufficient representation of diverse faculty perspectives on campus. With regards to the Ad Hoc Committee on Communication, I applaud the Board of Trustees for creating a committee to pursue better communication with all constituent groups and the community. Again, a good example of we can do better by tackling the exact area where the ACCJC dinged LBCC in its last accreditation report. However, I am shocked at some of the content I read in this report. With regards to number one, trustee communications with the community, specifically the media, the report reads, board members will be expected to respect the board president or designee as the official spokesperson for the board to the media. In addition, board members are expected to refer calls from the media to the superintendent president or board president as appropriate. <clears throat> This system potentially discourages debate and dialogue in the media among board members. Currently, if there is a disagreement... Just turn the mic back on. Thank you so much. Currently, if there is a disagreement among board members over an issue affecting the campus community, there is room for our leaders to share their differing points of view with the public they serve. While this policy certainly cannot limit a board member's free speech, it attempts to create a lockstep lock hierarchy for how the board trustees control its communications on issues affecting the campus community. With regards to number two, trustee protocols for training, meetings, and communication with college constituent groups, the report reads, Trustees are asked to communicate directly with the superintendent president prior to board meetings to obtain answers to questions and or concerns about agenda items. The purpose of this procedure is to streamline board meetings by providing answers to questions and clarification of agenda items so as not to unnecessarily take up board time during meetings. It is asked that such reports be communicated within 48 hours after the agenda has been sent to the board of board members. The superintendent president will determine if the submitted questions or concerns can be answered prior to the board meeting and will share any such answers with all trustees. If the trustee does not communicate the request for information or questions with at least 48 hours notice, then the superintendent president may decline the request based on the availability of staff resources. First, board members should be encouraged to dialogue and ask questions of the superintendent and each other regarding agenda items. The superintendent should not serve as a bottleneck to these communications. Second, while nothing in here limits a board member from asking questions in a meeting, this seems to discourage transparency and public dialogue by limiting questions and concerns to closed communications among our campus leaders and electeds. In item number two, a subtitle is Interactions with Internal Constituent Groups. The report reads, trustees are encouraged to meet with internal constituent groups to share information and exchange ideas. All requests for trustees to meet with internal groups should be directed to the superintendent president's office 
and be open to all board members so long as adherence to the Brown Act is maintained. Trustees are expected to coordinate with the superintendent president when planning to attend any college-related meeting, forum, and or college-sponsored event to ensure that all trustees have equal opportunities to participate. Well, elected officials are public servants and thus should be available to the public, period. I'm not aware of any elected official that cannot receive communication directly from constituents. Again, I think we can do better than this type of policy. In response to these items, I just don't see how it improves communications. If anything, it further limits communications between board members and the campus constituent groups. I really think the board can do better in this policy. One item, I'm almost finished. One item not mentioned in this report is a request I made to the, uh, both President Oakley and Board President Otto uh, to prov provide a seat at the dais for CCA and Chai and AFT for that matter. A step in the right direction, President Otto, Trustee Baxter and Trustee Zia and President Oakley all individually agreed it would be to, um, would agreed, uh, would be to place each constituent group on the Board of Trustees agenda. Uh, last Board of Trustees meeting, the CHI president, Karen Roberts, made her comments at the very end of the meeting, uh, well after I had to leave. And I believe agendizing the constituent groups would be a superb example of we can do better to provide direct communication from our constituent groups at these Board of Trustees meetings beyond the three minutes in public comments in which it is hard to make a point. I want to again thank Trustee Zia, Baxter, and Otto for meeting with myself and a CCA executive board meeting this semester. I am very disappointed to see a communications document that would seem to stifle constituent groups' efforts to communicate directly with the board. As I stated last meeting, we expect the administration and board to prioritize faculty at every juncture with regards to budgeting, negotiations, policy and regulations, and communications. Of course, we faculty are the ones who are educating our future. So to prioritize us would be to prioritize our students' future. And that would be the evidence of we can do better. Thank you. So we're now going to call, uh, and from our reordered agenda, agenda item 4.2, which is the local workforce training, apprenticeship, and local hire policy. And so moved. I, I haven't entertained a motion yet. Um, and I wanted to explain what, um, uh, what, what this matter is all about. Um, beginning about six months ago, I met with some IBEW representatives about this subject, and we had a general discussion about, uh, about the need for working families uh, to, uh, to have uh, uh, solid uh, programs. Uh, it's always been a goal of Long Beach City College to create policies and practices that ensure a skilled local workforce. Indeed, community colleges are the only uh, group in higher education that have uh, economic development as part of their mission. And that means um, uh, that we have to consider or we should be considering efforts to improve workforce training and local hires in this area. So after that meeting, I went with other IBEW representatives to the Electronics Training Center up in, uh, in Commerce and uh, met with them and saw the apprenticeship programs that they have and the training facilities. Uh, it was a real eye-opener to me to see how important education is to, uh, to uh, the IBEW. And I went with, from there to a series of meetings with uh, Ron Miller, who is the uh, head of, uh, of the trades here in uh, both Orange County and Los Angeles County. And we began discussing what a program might look like, what requirements would be on both sides, and um, that real, those meetings, I think, have now brought us to this agenda item today. 
And uh, I'm, uh, I had suggested this because I felt that, um, the, uh, that it was important to begin this dialogue to see whether such an agreement could be reached, whether people would be willing to come and express what it was that they needed. Uh, we're very interested in local hire requirements. We're interested in apprenticeship programs that ensure Long Beach students receive the benefits of state certified training and apprenticeship programs. We want to outreach, um, uh, we want an outreach component to encourage both local small and minority and women owned uh, businesses to participate in district finance construction projects. And we hope that if we can pass this measure that when we bring this back to the board in approximately 90 days, we can have such an agreement worked out. So I wanted people to understand the genesis of this idea and uh, where it came from, and with that, I'd entertain that, a motion. I, Doug, I totally agree with you, and I um, move that we give the president the official charge to begin this uh, exploratory process. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Second by Trustee Baxter. Right. Zia. Excuse me. Give her but, what? Uh, no, that, that, that's what I heard. That's what I heard, that's the way it will be. I believe I uh, made a motion earlier, but I apologize, I didn't realize you wanted to um, give a briefing, so um, hopefully that takes a little seniority, but uh, it, it, either it, way, it's we, uh, fine. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so is there a discussion? Yes. Uh, Trustee Zia. Thank you, Doug. I, um, uh, I appreciate your leadership uh, in bringing this item forward, uh, President Otto. Um, and th thank you for all the brothers and sisters of labor who are here today. It's wonderful to see you in the crowd. And uh, thank you, Doug, for being supportive of organized labor and an effort to increase job opportunities for our local residents and improve the quality of our workforce training. Um, the natural next step uh, of this process is for us to bring forward uh, a formal project labor agreement with a very strong local hire provision, especially as we discuss placing a new construction bond measure on the ballot. Um, I just uh, had a question to see if when we would, uh, when might we be able to discuss the subject of uh, PLA and the timing of bringing such a measure forward. Thank you. Any other comments? No, I just, I support Hiring local people, it's good for the economy and it's good for our citizens. Yeah, the recommended action is to, that the Board of Trustees direct the Superintendent President to receive and report back to the Board of Trustees on the development of a local workforce training, apprenticeship, and local hire policy at the February 23rd, 2016 board member meeting. In our discussions, and I've been in meetings with, uh, with uh, Chris and uh, uh, President Oakley and uh, Ron Miller, we've all agreed that a 90-day time frame was about what was needed in order to get uh, something uh, uh, worked out, and so that's what the recommendation is. Excuse me, President Otto, I, I believe I had a question about the timing of uh, the subject of the PLA. Is that when, would that be in February? Yes. Or? Okay, great, thank you. Trustee Archuleta. Yes, I just um, have a comment. Uh, First and foremost, um, I want to go on record to say that having this item on the agenda is an encouraging step to demonstrate that LBCC continues to move in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And I am pleased that we are uh, asking the president to move forward with this. I also want to thank uh, Trustee Otto for his work on this effort and for bringing this item to the agenda, uh, uh, this item forward. I believe that this is a historical moment for LBCC, first because it presents an opportunity to work with labor and establish a long-standing partnership that will benefit our students and our community overall. And second, I think my predecessor, uh, Council Member Roberto Uranga, would be very pleased that we are moving forward. I know that this is something that he uh, talked about and that he support, uh, in, uh, supported when he was in the seat. So, yes, it's all about the timing. It wasn't the time uh, when uh, uh, Council Member Uranga sat in the seat, but the timing is right. And I'm excited that uh, my colleagues and I are in support of this endeavor. And so it's, it's time to make it happen. Thank you. <laughs> 